quick overview of how the system works. Each feeder cavity runs to a spool. Each feeder cavity has a lock on it with a washer and this is one with the uh, unlocking key. When the feeder is unlocked, filament can be fed through. And when it is locked, it cannot be fed through. All feeders are permanently engaged through the motor and are pressed down with magnetic springs and are held by a holding latch. So the filament is always turned through and is pushed against locking gates so that other feeders do not spew out. Each feeder has a compression plate on it that is pressed down to apply pressure to the filament to feed. Pressure is applied by the servo I have not set up yet. With the feeder down and latched in, as the feeder head carriage moves across the gates, you can hear them open and close. When the servo is over the feeder you want to use, pressure is applied to push the filament down and it spews out. My understanding no Bowden is needed because it spews out the filament and then the servo will release and then it's just a free run of filament. Filament is free running through the machine but when pressure is applied to the gate down here it locks the filament and you can't pull it. It's time to build our carrot feeder block. Stage 1, line up all the blocks. Printed, ready to go. The rest of the components are in bags and we should get this done today. The build is coming along really nice. I'm just waiting for some more parts to print because I am doing it multicolored and not following the color spec. The small components and the quality of the prints are coming out fantastic. Components clip to and hold together really well. Need to do some tuning on these other ones as they don't drop down. The easiest way I found to install the linear bearings is just to push it in the device. Smooth and clean. Comes up looking great. These print in place hinges are very awesome. Sliding on the feeder carriages. Just waiting for the end motor mount to print and we have our feeder almost ready. These things are really cool on how they work. They're all floaty magnets. Very, very awesome. On the encoder sensor, I just Stanley knife the edge of the block so when it sits inside the encoder, it actually slides up and down in here smoothly. You can see it in there and it does slide quite smoothly when I uh, pull it out. It is quite a tight fit. Stage one done. And now we're on to stage two, which is the feeder unit. I think this is one of the funnest parts is when you start feeding the belt. It's really starting to come together now. The excitement was too much and I've put this part upside down. Easy fixed. Yes, that is so much better. So the only downside was I had to cut the end cable for the servo to feed it through the loom and the same for the front which is easy joined because these don't fit through the cable chain and these cable chains don't pop off. Quick solder job, we've got the ends reconnected on both sides. The main unit is complete. I'm very impressed. Time for the electronics. It's complete up to the software stage. I'm super impressed with how awesome this is. Just open up these latches which I've not got properly locked in. And the machine opens up. And the selector with all the little magnets to stop the filament peeling out.
very awesome. So we just got our printer on the side using our frame rollers which are very awesome. Total messy power bay but we've got our power just running out the side and we've added a grey USB extension out the side so let's get this thing rolled over. Got it rolled over so we've got our USB extension that can go straight to the rabbit feeder and then we've got our 12 volts just hanging out and we're going to attach another end to this. I wasn't able to program my board while it had all the connections in for some reason. So I'm going to program it and then connect it up.